they would never let me say this on CNBC. MSNBC would never let me say what I'm saying. The US dollar is fake. Never in the history of the world has any fake money ever survived. And we're doing the same thing. We just keep printing this money. Today, there's quantitative easing, which is counterfeiting mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. And then you have zero interest rates. And people are still saving money. They just printed, I think, $500 billion because the repo market is going down. And the average guy goes, well, what's the repo market? They don't know. Look at what's going on in Paris today as we talk. They're rioting. Millions of people are rioting because of pensions. Japan, they're rioting because of pensions. It's terrible. You see them. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And Americans, oh, I how my 401k is doing. I'm going, gee, I'd be a little bit worried. But they don't know. The average firefighter has about 1.2 million in pension. But there's nothing there. What do you mean? Their payout's going to be about 1.2 million. The average... The so average firefighter retiree has a $1.2 million pension all, payout. Yeah, they, that's how much they'll get paid out. Okay. But there's nothing there. It's a problem. Meaning what? Meaning they don't have the money to pay the benefits? It was stolen. It was stolen by Wall Street. Today is 2020, right? Mm -hmm. In 10 years, 2030, 2 billion baby boomers across the world will retire. Japan's broke. Argentina's broke. China's broke. Italy's broke, Germany's broke. All these old guys are retiring. The repurchase market is the biggest, one of the biggest markets in the world. And the Fed is bailing that one out now. So the average American is watching the stock market, but not what's, what's really going on. So that means retirees, their kids, taxpayers will pay for the heist. Do you think the reason why we're not really having the conversation about the big elephant in the room, which is the, you know, say $100 trillion of unpaid uh, commitments that we have, not including the $22 trillion of debt that we have. We have Medicare, Social Security, we have all this unpaid commitments that we made, not including the debt we have to Russia, to Japan, not Russia, to China, to Japan, all this stuff that we have to pay for, right? Do you think the reason why none of the presidents are really talking about it is because if they do, it's not a eight-year fix. So whatever they do, if they campaign on it, it's a 20, 40 year fix. So because they have no influence to fix it, and so they're just kind of letting it go to the next president? They can't fix it. So, so does that say that the current model of how we pick presidents, is that an effective model? Because, you know, if they can't do anything, like why would I want to campaign around paying off the national debt when there's nothing I can do about it in four years? Because the GDP is what, 3.6 trillion, National debt is 22 trillion. Even if I took the GDP and I made no one, no one make any money, everybody paid taxes 100%, 3.6 trillion. In four years, I wouldn't even pay off half the debt that we have. No, and, and that's why you know Pocahontas, Elizabeth Warren talks about tax to rich, AOC, tax to rich. Well, I hate to tell you this, but the rich don't pay taxes. So in 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? Fake money. As soon as they could print money, any time throughout history, they printed money, the money disappeared. It went broke. Every country that printed money went broke. We're going broke. U.S. is going down. Japan is going down. Europe's going down. South America is going down. Mexico's in serious trouble. Look at Venezuela, the richest oil country in the world. They're going down. Zimbabwe going down. Because we're run by these kleptomaniacs or something call politicians. The same guys that robbed the world are robbing their pensions. Interest rates are close to zero and the printing of money um, to buy assets is not as effective. In the old days, in the normal days, uh, if the economy didn't do so well, you'd hit it with a, a little joke of stimulation. You'd lower, lower the interest, interest rate, rate and, yeah. and put some cash out there. You give it a hype and mm -hmm. then it goes, okay? When you get to zero, or close to zero, you can't lower those interest rates. So we're close to that level in the United States. We're at those levels, negative interest rates in Europe, negative interest rates in Japan. That baby ain't gonna work anymore when you try to lower that in terms of that won't happen, okay? That's limited. And then the, what they do is they go out and they print money and they buy financial assets. And that is not working as well because what happens is when you buy the financial assets, it goes into the hands of the, of 
who own financial assets, yeah. investors. And what they do is they put it into more investments. That notion of putting it into more investments makes those investments go up in price, which is great for the people who have the investments, but not so great for the people who don't have the investments. It widens the wealth gap and it's a, its own challenge. And it's not going to be stimulative and you'll see it. There's a rise of a, uh, a power to challenging an existing world power. China rising to challenge the United States. And if you look at it through history, uh, when there's existing world powers and there's rising of a challenging power, um, there is a conflict. There are conflicts. Um, and they've led to wars. In the last 500 years, that's happened 16 times. And in 12 of those times, they ha there were wars. There are four types of wars that happen simultaneously. We always think shooting each other and sending people and bodies into wars and that kind of war. But, but they all have four types of wars. Um, they have a trade war. Mm -hmm. They often start with a trade war, 1930s, smooth Harley tariffs. Um, there is a technology war. There is a geopolitical war, like is happening with China. What will it mean for Asia, Asian countries? And there's a capital war. For example, just recently, the Trump administration said that they're considering shutting off capital to uh, China, a certain flow of capital to China. Well, that's not happened before. You have to go back to World War II. Um, and in World War II, um, and in a number of wars that other countries have had, they have a capital war, which means that uh, that they could say, the Trump administration could say to the Chinese, um, you know those trillion dollars of bonds that you own? Uh, well, we're not going to pay you. Because that will determine in the markets what will happen in, in the markets and the economy, right? And number one, that wealth gap, who, who you elect will have a big economic and market impact. Number two, yeah. the absence of monetary policy will have a big market impact as to what will be done. And number three, this geopolitical war, which involves those four things, technology and so on, will have a big just impact. just ascertain what is known and a known hushed up secret that the Chinese knew for six weeks about the virus before saying anything on the global stage to get a trade deal signed? Somebody needs to look into that because countless lives have been lost as a result. This Rockefeller Foundation document um, was about a scenario involving a flu pandemic. And it described what would happen, that, that, that China would um, use uh, authoritarian, draconian methods to, to, to meet the challenge and then the West wouldn't basically start like that, but then would, would, would become the same. And, and, and this whole global lockdown was described in this document. I'm Christian at heart and I like to think that nobody would want to kill people. I will say this much, and if you're listening, write it down. In late November, word had already gotten off of the mainland that there was a virus in Wuhan. On January the 15th, the U.S. trade bill was signed, phase one. December the 15th, excuse me, December the 15th. I had a whole month off, December the 15th. Six weeks later, the trade truce was signed with an out clause, a very clever out clause that the Chinese made sure was in there that said if there was any kind of act of God, pandemic, then they didn't have to make good on what they had committed to buy from the United States. Within days, they announced the first coronavirus. So, did the Chinese know damn well that this thing was running around the world for six weeks before they shut down Wuhan? Yes, they did. Is that criminal? Yes, it is. Does it deserve to go in front of a world tribunal? Yes, it does. Because we know that it was the unfettered travel that made this thing a global phenomenon that was impossible to contain. Six weeks they knew but they wanted that out clause. And then they underreported what happened in Wuhan, which a toddler could tell you based on what happened in Italy, based on what's happened in Germany and in France, and now in the UK with Boris Johnson in the ICU. 
There's no way in a city the size of New York, 11 million people, that there were so few cases. It's impossible with similar density to New York. So the World Health Organization should be held accountable for not holding China accountable to providing good valid data so that the rest of the world could prepare for fewer people to die. And that's what you're talking about. To me, these are equivalents to acts of war on the part of China. And then, equally, whether you're talking about NPR or Fox News, most major media outlets on both sides of the aisle came out and reassured the United States that it was just the flu. Within 24 hours of South Korea's first case being reported, the United States' first case was reported. And what we did was dither. We sat on it for six weeks and tried to reassure the public that nothing was happening. Somebody should be held accountable for that because somebody in the United States intelligence community has to have known what was truly going on in Wuhan. We don't have a CIA for nothing. And yet we told Americans for six weeks while South Korea was testing everybody and shutting the country down that it was just gonna be the flu. So there are a lot of responsible bodies right now that have taken us to the point where we're at, inside the country and in China. And they need to be held accountable. So you don't even have to get on the discussion as to whether or not that was, this was a manufactured virus and set upon the world. You don't even have to go that far. If we find that in future investigations, then that needs to be prosecuted. But if we just ascertain what is known and a known hushed up secret that the Chinese knew for six weeks about the virus before saying anything on the global stage to get a trade deal signed? Somebody needs to look into that because countless lives have been lost as a result. The damages are in the tens of trillion dollars. We're not talking about small here if that's the case. No, we're not. And we're talking about people losing their family members and we're talking about trillions of, we're talking about suicides in the future, we're talking about economic hardship. All of this could have been mitigated had China been honest and had the World Health Organization made China accountable. Let me ask you, who do you, who do you trust the least? You, uh, Iran, Russia, or China? China. China's got more economic power. Because of that or because they don't have a free press and because we can't really know what the hell is going on over there? Well, that's just a kicker, but you don't really know what's going on in Iran either. You had global satellite images in Iran showing mass graves. Iran underreported the same. And you can't tell me that in the cold of winter that Russia has as many cases as it's reporting. But at last check, China's 17% of global GDP. They can throw more money around than anybody else. And you just mentioned two of their allies, by the way. When you look in the, the global average and in most other countries, um, the number of people who are seriously affected by this against all those who are not, the way the whole economic system is being shut down is suicide. And, and what happens when it reaches a point where in its present state, it cannot continue, it cannot survive. A whole new economic system comes in. The idea of human-caused human climate change, it's a hoax. Um, and people say, well, why would they hoax climate change? You look at all the solutions to climate change, and again and again and again, they are exactly the same solutions as, and consequences as with the coronavirus.